Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Brian the Floridian, coming to you from St. Pete, Florida, and I am right here next to the water, a little bit down from Vinoy, Vinoy Park, which is like a little bit more south of me, but behind me is a pier, I'm not sure if you can see it past those trees, but anyway guys, down here to check out this story, actually this story, I've been wanting to check out this place for a while, and this story's been a mystery for about 73 years, and... What I'm talking about is the story of Mary Hardy Reeser. And you're asking me who that is. But anyway, let's go take a walk and I'll tell you more about it. Follow me. believed that everything in creation, including the human body, was derived from four basic elements of nature, earth, air, water, and fire. Many thought that if fire could be found in the body, then it might be possible for it to flare out uncontrollably. The Bible in Leviticus tells of the sons of Aaron being consumed by a mystical blaze. Since the early 1800s, it's been called spontaneous human combustion, a mystery where the human body is reported to burn from the inside out, reducing it to ash while its surroundings are untouched. So it's a really beautiful day out here in St. Pete right now. But anyway, guys, on to the topic. So stories about with this lady, she's a widow named Mary Hardy Reeser. And what makes her famous is like back in July 1st, 1951, she actually was sitting in her apartment. Her, 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 uh, her son, which was Dr. Richard Reeser Jr., came by to see her. So she lived alone. She lived in the apartment by herself alone in St. Pete. And she basically had dinner with her son. Uh, put her nightgown on, took two sleeping pills, and basically decided to sit her in her easy chair, her recliner, right in the middle of her living room, and decided to take a cigarette. So she took her cigarette, and before her son left, that was a you know he gave her a kiss. And that was the last kiss that he gave her. So that was the last time he ever saw her again live. Yeah, so, so this happened on 9 p.m. July 1st, 1951. And what happened was she, her landlord the next morning, which, was the, which her name was Pansy Carpenter, which was her landlord, she had a telegram to deliver to her, so she knocked on her door and noticed that the door was warm. And she also noticed that the doorknob was hot to the touch and she could smell smoke. And coming from inside the apartment, she can hear like the, like the fire cracking, like fire, like the embers cracking from, you know, like you would from a campfire. So she decided to call the police and the firefighters came, basically they came to the apartment and they found, walked in, found charred walls. They saw uh, soot, smoke filled um, all over the place. They found, they found just, just especially the top of the walls were full of, of soot and smoke. And where she was sitting at, Miss Reeser, she there was nothing there except a pile of ashes. So she, she basically vanished or disappeared or or so they thought but what they found also was they found the coils of the chair i mean that, that was the only thing that was left was the chair was was parts of the chair were still there the coils of the chair were still there they found part of her backbone 
Miss Reeser's backbone, and they also discovered a, a human foot, which was hers, her foot, her left foot, still in the black slippers that she put on the night before. So, so it's kind of a mystery because most of the fire was contained to the chair around the chair, and not every place all over the apartment, especially like below, like below, you know, like the lower part of the apartment was was clean. Hardly any fire damage, but uh, except around the chair, but around the top of the walls in the apartment where the room where the chair was at, it was full of soot, smoke. The uh, the switches on the the electrical switches were all warped, which was kind of weird. Was the switches below, like the the outlets before below, you know, like say below waist level, were intact and everything looked fine. Even her bed was, her her sheets and her comforter was still still white to the touch. Her sheets were still white. And her newspaper nearby was not even touched. There was no burn marks on her, her newspapers. So, interesting, interesting, interesting at least. And so this, this story kind of mystified the, the police and the fire department. I also meant to say that they found her skull uh, shrunk into the size of a cup. That was another body part they found, which was unusual. So the fire department and police had no, didn't know what to make of the case. So they, they were looking for ideas. They, they got all kinds of ideas. Maybe they thought it was a lightning strike. Uh, they had a bunch of amateur detectives trying to give them ideas about what happened. One of them said that maybe a ball of fire shot through the window and consumed Mrs. Reeser, which was a theory, but kind of kind of off kind of a big off the wall theory but definitely they you know they investigated all, all these little theories so the only thing that they can think of us what one of the one of the amateur investigators said maybe it was human combustion spontaneous human combustion where the body would just you know someone would just spontaneously go up in flames so they kept that option open but they still didn't know what the, what the make of it so so for this case actually got caught national attention and Saint, made, made St. Petersburg a, a, a spot of national attention because of this case. And they called, they called, Miss, they called the case the Sender Woman Mystery. So at the time, the police, the police chief of St. Pete was, uh, was uh, Junior Reichardt. And he still had no clear answer, so he actually c contacted the FBI to figure out what you know what he, what to make of this case and if they can help out, and he actually wrote a letter to J. Edgar Hoover, and this is what he said in his letter. He said, "This fire is too puzzling for this small town force to handle." Basically, asked him for help, so they sent all the evidence, all the boxes of evidence from the case. You know, like the. Uh, Apartment parts of the apartment rug, the smoke samples, the rubber from the wall, the rubble from the walls and the floor, parts of the chair. They sent even parts of the body to the FBI, to the FBI lab, to find out if they can figure out what happened to uh, Miss Reeser. And come to find out, they found no evidence of any lightning strike. They found no evidence of a fireball hitting Miss. Reeser through her uh, through the window and engulfing her in flames, and they basically could not detect anything, anything that any kind of uh, substance that can start the fire, which you know which would have been any accelerant like alcohol, gasoline, or anything anything that would have um, started the fire it should have been left behind, but it was never left, no nothing was left behind, so they couldn't find out what exactly started the fire. And what was, what was weird is uh, that all the fuses in the building were intact. So the fire was consumed to that one area around her chair. And, but, they, but they ultimately ruled out spontane spontaneous combustion because uh, they could not put a finger on that or it was too new for them to really, to really understand. But one of the theories was that they, they theorized that she sat down with her cigarette she took her two sleeping pills she dozed off in her chair 
and the chair she was sitting at was a, was was a pretty good size um, recliner, overstuffed recliner, so easy chair. And they theorized that she fell asleep, and a cigarette fell on her nightgown and caught fire. She was 170 pounds. They theorized that that with her nightgown and her and her her body mass, her her specifically her her fat, that it created enough fuel to burn upwards meaning that it it confined the fire to the chair so that you know where it wouldn't spread out so the so the fuel source was her fat that's, that's what they theorized and they ruled it an a accidental death so that was one that was how they this that's that's how they decided what the cause of her accident was and which 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 was a plausible uh cause because you know her apartment floor was was cement and it was just around the chair where, where the fire was where she was consumed by the fire but uh that's that's pretty much what they theorize this case caught attention of a lot of people uh, this gentleman by the name of wilton krogman he was from the university of pennsylvania he was an anthropologist and he studied the case and he actually disagreed because because of the magnitude of the fire, if it was, if it was, um, what they say it was, the fire should have, should have been so hot it would have caused her skull to explode, but it only caused it to shrink, which was unusual for, for her body to be consumed by the fire and be cremate, cremated like, like, like they said it was. And, and what he theorized was also the cremation of her of her ashes it should have been it would it would have required several thousand degrees of heat over the course of several hours to consume that much body mass and what he thought was also there should have been more more of a um, damage in apartment more of a fire spreading out so so definitely definitely a mystery about what happened but it happened not too far from here. Let me tell you more about Mrs. Uh, Reeser. She was from Columbia, Pennsylvania, and her, she was married to a physician named Dr. Richard Reeser, Sr. And as you know, she lived up there with him in Pennsylvania. When he passed away, she moved down here to be with her son and granddaughters. And come to find out, before she passed, before she passed. She was a little bit unhappy about this area. She it, she found it to be too hot down here in Florida. She always had her windows open, and she had her windows open that night that this fire happened, where she was consumed. And she she just basically wanted thought about moving back, and her son actually saw the had this discussion with her about moving back before she uh, before he saw you know, before he last saw her. So interesting fact right there but pretty interesting case never never was officially solved because it's still a mystery it's still a mystery down here after 73 years man there's a lot of squirrels around here in st pete especially right here and it's funny because they're all following me right now but right there is the pier These guys are just around me right now, just trying to see if I, if I can give me anything, any food. It's funny because I was walking around here, they're following me the whole time. All right guys, let's go check out that apartment where this happened to Mary Hardy Reeser. It's right over here. It's actually on 1200 Cherry Street, Northeast part of St. Pete's. And let's go check it out. It's just down the road here. All right guys, walking down uh, Cherry Street North, Northeast right now, and almost there. And I'll show you the house. It's right here on my right. This is where the uh, this is where the mystery happened. Reportedly, the uh, human human uh, spontaneous combustion case. And let's see. 
So very nice looking neighborhood down here. So anyway, it would be right here. That's where it happened, right over there. And it looks like there's a couple uh, apartments there, maybe three apartments. So I'm not really sure where it happened, but it happened right over here somewhere. Right on a quiet street, basically. And as you can tell, that is 1200 uh, Cherry Street, Northeast. And that's where it happened. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe, and I will do more little, little interesting places around here in Florida. But thought about, thought about just always want to check this place out, this house behind me, because I heard more, a lot of things about that story through the years, and it's still a mystery here in St. Pete about what happened. So definitely a mystery about the theory about human spontaneous combustion. If it really, if it's real, you guys think it's real? Let me know in the comments. Very interesting though, very interesting case. And just, it just baffles a lot of experts because the evidence is not, doesn't point to a specific cause. But anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Take care.